One of the rear driving wheels on my Duchess of Athol locomotive fell apart when I tried to run the loco after a period of storage of about 25 years. I decided to make a replacement driving wheel and I was amazed at how fragile the original casting was and how soft it was and how easy it was to break. So first thing I did is I took very careful measurements of the broken driving wheel and one of the existing wheels and I drew a small plan. I decided to make the replacement wheel out of aluminium because I realized that the part would probably be stronger and harder than the original wheel and electrical conductivity was not really a problem. It was not my intention to produce an exact replica of the spokes and inner hub structure of the original driving wheel. I don't have time for that, although it would be possible with milling, filing, drilling. Yeah, I'm checking for run out on the face of the bar. And here I'm checking for run out along the length of the bar. So I could be sure when I was drilling the hole for the axle that it was absolutely true and concentric in the center of this bar. Yeah, machining to the diameter of the outer wheel flange. Now machining the diameter of the tread of the wheel. I'll put the profile on this tread at a later stage. Now the tread is the correct diameter, I'm starting to file the profile on the tread and I did this by using the calibrated eye and the existing piece of the broken casting that I had as a template. Yeah, filing the correct profile on the flange using the eyeball technique. Yeah, I'm machining a recess to expose a raised wheel hub and also the front face rim which is slightly lower than the raised inner hub. I machined everything to within one hundredth of a millimeter and that level of accuracy was sufficient to make a replica wheel. off the position of the crank pin hole. A hardened and sharpened nail is a much more accurate way of center punching when you're working at a very small scale. Drilling the hole for the crank pin. The crank pin is a press fit in this hole so the drill size has to be absolutely correct. I didn't use a parting tool, I cut the wheel away from the bar using a jeweler's hacksaw by hand and then I machined the back face until I got the correct wheel thickness or width to within a hundredth of a millimeter. Yeah, I'm comparing the fabricated wheel to the original and I was fairly satisfied with the result. I 
I could see that the profile of the tread and the flange was close enough. Fitting the new wheel to the loco was a bit of a fiddly job because the axle and the crank pin are a press fit. But I could see that the new wheel was far stronger than the fragile original wheels. On the initial track test the wheel ran true with no wobbling and there was no problem with curved sections of track in either direction. I painted the inside face and the raised wheel hub using Humbrol Satin Black. The front face rim and the tread and the back flange are painted with metallic grey. When viewing the loco while it is moving, there is only a slight visible difference between the fabricated wheel and the other wheels. After about four hours of operation, there are no visible signs of wear on the fabricated wheel.